What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And I hope you like this video. This is Ready to Love, Season 7, Episode 7. So, <clears throat> listen, we still talking. Everybody's saying what they like and what they don't like. Blake, Jeffrey, Suzanne, get it, or Susu, whatever, child. They get into another one of their con Listen, I don't care anymore. I'm over it and I don't care. Jeffrey, you don't like Blake. Leave him alone. You don't have to roll your eyes. You don't have to suck your teeth. You don't have to come for Su Suzanne. You don't have to do for none of, do none of that, okay? I don't know why y'all can't get rid of this man. I don't know why he is like the incredible hawk and he's in the bottom every week, but y'all can't seem to get him out the door. That ain't my issue, and it ain't Susu's issue either. Let it go. I don't know who's telling the truth or who's lying, but at this point, I know I don't care no more. Um, you know, uh, Tommy says, listen, you know, in order to go forward in love, you got to be able to take criticism. We're going to get rid of two people tonight. We're going to let y'all go and have dinner while I talk to the guys and I talk to the girls. And y'all need to go ahead and, and make y'all final pleas because everybody is up for up on the block tonight. So we see Andre go, how to, go try to have a conversation with Mercedes. And Mercedes said, look, bro, it ain't nothing personal. It's just that when you were no longer here, it was out of sight, out of mind, and I moved on with the process. Andre was hurt by that because he was like, damn, I thought our connection was a little bit deeper, but clearly not. Clearly not. He rolled over to Jeffrey, and him and Jeffrey had a little moment. They was all goo goo ga guys and whatever. Uh, Cynthia and, um, was it? I don't remember. Don't matter. They was talking to Andrew, and they were telling Andrew, you have to be more intentional. They said, you know, I feel like you want people to chase you, you know, you don't call, you know, she was like, it's one thing, we on the phone, we have a good conversation, but then when we see each other, you don't even talk to me, it's like you work in the room, you, you know, and I feel like you want me to chase you, and queens don't chase. I said, oh no, that's right, queens don't chase, I ain't mad about that. Um, Tony, we saw him flirting with Jonique, remember he said that it was something about her, gave him a different feel, a, gif a different vibe, so you know, he was flirting or whatever. Um, of course we see him talking to Morgan, you know, that's like his, you know, main connection or whatever. Um, who else do we see floating around? I ain't see Blue. Blue, Blue really finds a way to blend in and play the bat. I don't know if that's good or bad, Blue. I don't know if that's good or bad. But I, I, we don't really see Blue a lot. We don't really see him a lot. Um, we saw Mark Anthony talking to Jeffrey, I believe, and, um, Morgan. Maybe it was. I don't know. Listen, for whatever reason, Morgan and Mercedes look alike to me. They blend in. I, I don't. They look alike to me. But moving on. So, Tommy talks to the guys, and the names that are at the bottom for them are Jonique and Su Suzanne. But of course, as long as Blake is there, Susu ain't going nowhere, child. He going to fight for her. Uh, well, I ain't going to say not going anywhere, but I don't think it was her time to go yet. Nobody really made a connection with Jonique, even though Jonique started kind of flirting with Tony and I think maybe Lyndon. I don't know. But she was up on the block. Now, the guys, I mean, on for the ladies, the guys that when the, the name came up were Andrew, Blake, and Mark Anthony. And a lot of the ladies said, you know, I think that Mark Anthony is just, he's not where we are. Like, he's still, he's a nice guy, but he's not quite ready for the marriage, you know, live happily ever after kids you know, pick a fence kind of situation. And so, I, you know, for that, maybe two or three years, okay. But right now, eh, we're not too sure about. Andrew, you know, they didn't already said they think Andrew playing games and they don't have the energy for it and he wants them to chase them and they ain't going to chase him and that's just what it is. Um, and Blake, child is Blake. Blake going to be at the bottom until, till he ain't at the, till he win, okay? Until <laughs> he be the last man standing, Okay. So it came down to Tony and Andrew. And Tony was the person that they picked. However, the women decided to use their save. And they voted unanimously to use their save. But on the men's side, they voted out Jonique. And they ain't used no save. Now here's where I think it's some bull, some bull crap. It was the last week that you could use the save. So why not save her? You knew she... Had, you know, Tony said in the lounge that he was feeling her, that he really was interested in seeing where it could go, that Morgan was like his main connection, but he was kind of feeling, he, he was feeling um, Jonique a little bit, and he kind of was, was interested to see where it could go. 
And I just felt like unless production told them they couldn't do it, I if it was the last week to use the save, why not freaking use the save? I just didn't, I, I don't know. I just thought that was real petty. And if I was Jonique, I would have felt some kind of way about it because they the guys used their save. But then ain't nobody save her. I just thought it was kind of screwed. I, I, I didn't like it. I didn't like it. I didn't like it. But anyway, so then we go on to these dates. So Andrew, um, he has a date with, I, I, yeah, I keep getting, I keep getting, it was Sue, Sue, Sue. It was Sue, Sue. He had her over to his house. It looked really nice. But, y'all, it was awkward. There's no chemistry there. He was fumbling the bag. She was uninterested. You know, it just, there's nothing there. Like, Sue, Sue, you like Blake, and that's pretty much it. Um, I don't really think it's too much more there. Nice try. Um, then we see Mark Anthony go out on a date with Mercedes. They definitely have chemistry. They were flirting the whole time, you know, then he ended up kissing her. Well, actually she kissed him. She leaned in for that kiss. Um, and they looked like they enjoyed it. You know, they looked like they, wait a minute, hold on. That wasn't, that was, I'm sorry. Mm -mm, flag on the play. That was Jeffrey. That was Jeffrey. Mercedes was the next date. That was Jeffrey. They did seem to have a, they seem to have a good time, but again, Jeffrey was talking about, you know, that I think she, she has Lyme disease, I think. And she was talking about how it affects her and with her kids and stuff like that. And he was like, wow, thank you for sharing that with me. No, the date that was hot and heavy, the steamy date, that was Mercedes. Um, and they spoke about how both of them have a desire to, you know, get their pilot's license and yada, 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 yada. But he kissed Jeffrey too. He kissed both of them. Because all I could think about was Sabrina. Shout out to Sabrina Soul, who I do the panel with on um, uh, Tuesday nights over on her channel. And she talked about how she ain't out here kissing all these different people. And all I could think was he didn't kiss both of them women. And Sabrina would have a fit. <laughs> <laughs> but I do feel like Mark Anthony has probably the stronger connection with um, Mercedes. They definitely, I mean, she was smiling and grinning the whole time. And they definitely were having a good time. They, you know, and, and I enjoyed that day. Tony and Morgan, I don't, it's something about them I don't like. I don't like how Morgan uh, um, is so, like, like you're going to do this. And I told you to do that. And he like, for real? Oh, for real, that's how you feel? I don't, I feel like he is, is playing Rico Suave, and I feel like she is trying to be like, put my foot down, you gonna listen to me, you will obey me. I don't like it. I don't like the energy. I don't like it. It, it, it make me feel, I don't like it. I don't like them together. I don't like watching their scenes together. It's cringy to me. And maybe I'm just doing too much or reading too much into it, but I, like I said, ever since Morgan played that game, when they were doing the who you find the sexiest and you just got finished telling that man you was feeling him, but you chose not to pick him. I feel like I feel like y'all play games and I almost feel like the two of them are the movie two can play that game. Y'all remember that movie two can play that game where Vivica Fox was giving all the tips on what to do. Um, you know, don't let a man know you like him too much and these are all the games you need to play. And then in the end she lost her man and had to come correct to get him back. Yeah. That is what I feel like. When I'm watching them, that is what I feel like. I feel like I'm looking at Two can play that game, and it just ain't going to end well. Now, nobody else is getting eliminated next week. Tommy told them, y'all have been through a lot. There's a lot of stress going on. I just eliminated two people, so y'all kind of get a free week, which is all the more reason why y'all should have saved Jonique because it probably would have only prolonged it for a week, but maybe, just maybe, she would have had an opportunity to go out on a date with somebody else, and something might have clicked. I don't know. But I just felt like that was petty as F because y'all knew that was the last week to use that damn save. That's how the men were able to, um, that's why the women were able to just be like, all right, fuck it, let, let them stay. And the men could have done the same thing. I just felt like that was real petty. But moving on, I'm just, I ain't dwelling. I'm not going to dwell on that. I'm not going to dwell on that. Moving on. Then we see Blake meeting up with, um, is it Morgan? Because Morgan said that she felt like Blake talked to her crazy and, and, and was mean to her. Um, and Blake said he wanted to talk to her because he, you know, he 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 didn't mean to offend her. Whatever he did, he wanted to clear the air. Now, y'all know I got my issues with Blake. Y'all know Blake is not my, he ain't the, he's not my most favorite person in the world. But at the end of the day, 
he I do think he went in there with good intentions. He said, listen, I heard what you said. You said that I hurt. You know, he said, I apologize for how I made you feel. But but I'm still not clear on what I did. So can we can we talk about that? And from the minute he said that, she was like, well, how you apologizing for something you don't know you did? Because you didn't listen to his apology. Because his apology wasn't, I apologize that I did, dot, dot, dot. His apology was, I apologize for how I made you feel. He still doesn't know how he made her feel, but he's validating your feelings. See, sometimes you just can't make people happy. He's validating your feelings because if he had said, if he had walked in the door and was like, I ain't do nothing to you, what, what, what you mad about? Then it would have been a whole nother situation. But he came in validating your feelings saying, I apologize for how I made you feel. However, comma, I don't know what I did. Can we talk about that? And, and y'all don't even, y'all know how I feel when y'all be trying to make me defend people that I don't even see it for. I don't see it for Blake, but on that one, he wasn't wrong. And then she started talking about he's a cancer, and you're the worst kind of cancer. And I feel like you're this and you're that. Like, you made some very personal attacks on this man. Why? Because he said he didn't want to have kids? Because he made a comment about all the things you want to do, you're going to lessen your chances of getting them done once you have children? No lies are told. Listen, listen, listen. Can you still do great things when you have children? Absolutely. Does it make it more difficult? Sure. Does it eliminate certain things? Sure it does. Now, for you to sit there and act like having children doesn't change your lifestyle, you would be a liar. And, and, and again, again, I'm not saying that Blake is right for making you feel like Oh, you want kids? Oh, my gosh. But what Blake said was, look, been there and done that. Like, I'm at the point now where I don't have to look for babysitters. I don't have to do, like, my kids are old enough that if I'm, I mean, they probably don't live with him either. But if I want to go traveling, I can go traveling. If I want to stay out late, I can stay out late. If I don't want to come straight home from work, I ain't got to come straight home from work. Listen, as somebody that don't have children or a pet, those are all the reasons why I don't have none, okay? I don't want to worry about nobody but me. Ever. I didn't like it. I didn't like that, and I thought it was cruel. I, I thought it was cruel, and I hope, and again, maybe there's some backstory that's going on that we don't know about. Maybe Blake has said some things that has really offended and pissed these women off. I don't know, but that scene, the way it played out, the way it was shown, it was cruel, and I didn't like it. And Y'all know I don't like when y'all make me defend people that I don't want to defend, but I didn't like it at all. Anyway, I'll talk to y'all later. Peace.